This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. Competition continuing for Team Bahamas earlier today at the second Youth Olympic Games in Najing, China. Sailor Paul D'Souza contested three more series races in the one-man dinghy class, and he did much better than yesterday, finishing 14th, 13th that is, 14th and 18th respectively. D'Souza now sits 18th overall, moving up two places from yesterday. Also from the Youth Olympics today, our track and field team got their first taste of competition. Serena Brown got things started in the qualification rounds of the women's discus. She had a best throw of 127 feet 7.5 inches. That placed her 12th in the field of 16, and she will be back out again on Saturday to contest the B final. Up next was Devontae Mott in the prelims of the men's 110 hurdles. He finished his heat fourth in a personal best time of 13.86 seconds. That also qualified him for the B final on Saturday, where he will run out of lane number four. Our two quarter milers, they closed out the day. Up first was Shaquanya Dorson in the women's 400. She finished her heat fourth in 55.74. That too, a qualifier for the B final on Saturday, where she will run out of lane number six. As for the men's 400, Henry Deleuze finished his heat second, 47.44, and he will run the A final on Saturday out of lane number nine. Now most of our athletes competing at the Youth Olympics will become future elite athletes at the senior level and when they do, more resources should be available thanks to a new system which has been put in place by the Bahamas Olympic Committee. We're changing the landscape of sports as we know it and we're working in conjunction with the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture with a view of coming up with a strategic plan so that the BOC and the ministry don't cross hairs in terms of development. What we've noticed in the past is that some of the athletes that were on the um, subvention list was also receiving grants from the BOC uh, and so we have um, curtailed that to make sure that an athlete can't receive both um, so that we can assist more athletes and volleyball has already been the recipient of, of, those, um, uh, of those funds. Now another way the Bahamas Olympic Committee is assisting local athletes is by providing them with better opportunities which will allow them to compete at a higher level and the Bahamas Cycling Federation has already taken full advantage. We have cyclists who will soon be going off the high level training camp uh, uh, for months. Uh, you'll have uh, about three to four cyclists and a coach because you have to have the coach there to ensure that the same uh, level intensity of training is being carried on. Come October 23rd, inside the Crown Ballroom at the Atlantis Resort, Sir Derwood Knowles and the late Cecil Cook will both be awarded with the prestigious President's Medal on the 50th anniversary of the duo winning the country's first Olympic gold medal. Over the years, Sir Derwood has received most of the recognition for this significant moment in Bahamian sports history, while Cook has basically been left in the background, and Sir Derwood himself wants to set the record straight. It's a natural thing for a skipper to be recognized more than a crew. And I can't stop it, and they can't stop it. You know, when I talk, Cecil got to be there to talk with me. And whatever I do, he's got to be there to help me. And one of the reasons one, the, the, the hydrate from the jib broke away, and we had to withdraw. You know, here we are, thousands and thousands of miles from Nassau, and we got to put withdraw from a race that we cannot finish. But luckily what we did, we pulled out and got it repaired and went on to win the gold medal. And on crossing that line, I can never remember the remarks, the chairman of the Olympic Committee, an Englishman by the name of Scott, well done Bahamas. Now could you imagine today what that meant to us? And he didn't say well done Cecil Cook or David Knowles, well done Bahamas. And I want this today to understand that we, this is a Bahamian celebration. The Bahamas HBCU College Football Classic is fast approaching. The three-day event, which runs September 12th through the 14th, will be highlighted by a game between Central State and Texas Southern at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Over the last two, three months, the buzz in the states is just growing, growing, growing. And remember, 
This is the first year, so it's gonna it's the first year of a three year deal right now. So it's gonna take us a little bit to build this, but I can tell you right now, we are going to do a great job year after year after year. We think with the assistance of the, the tourism department, we will continue to grow this thing to another level. This morning, Jeff and I just did, did an interview on one of the biggest syndicated radio shows in the country, Tom Joyner, uh, and it went tremendous. And believe me, I've already gotten people texting me already who heard it at 6.45 in the morning, our time. So if people up that early listening to what we're talking about, you know there's a buzz going on about this game. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight is back after the break. This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.